Today I'm going to show you how I use random stuff I found around the house to take a picture of this laptop. <sighs> this laptop. Hey you, my name is Ilya and welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. Yeah, that was one of the suggestions for my intro. It, I don't know about you guys, but it seems just a tad bit impersonal. I'm sure you have better suggestions. Keep on spamming the comments with intro lines. How to trick people to engage with your content. So a little backstory to what we're doing today. I've had my laptop for almost five years and it's giving up the ghost. Mm, it looks pretty fancy in this light. You see, it's got that whole carbon matte finish, which I'm really digging, but it's just time to renew it. And I found a really good deal online, which is like an exchanged used laptop for a better used laptop with a little bit of added payment. And I want to do that, but the guy asked me to send him some pictures of the laptop. So I figured why not go the extra mile and take some like semi-pro photos, not your average mobile shot of the laptop, which you usually find on sites. So I rolled out this weird piece of banner cloth sheet thing as a background drop it's just important that you have this smooth thing that switches from floor to side so you don't have any major shadows even though I have this weird texture on it but we can get rid of that in post as you will see in this video my diffuser cooking paper sheet just fell off my 200 watt incandescent light bulb and made my video look unprofessional now it's so professional now I'm gonna go first person for a second and show you around my light setup okay so this is our light setup here we have two regular incandescent light bulbs but with the white balance as you see which is set here to incandescent the light looks pretty neutral it's white and setting it on the camera to be white as well gives you a pretty neutral lighting now in order to make a softer light and also get rid of those shadows that you see on the sides of the laptop we're gonna put a diffuser on the lights these are super bright bulbs they are 200 watts so they're brighter than your average incandescent bulb oops put a sheet of cooking paper over it and it should be fine. It does get hot, but because it's cooking paper, it uh, doesn't get hot enough to burn. Now, as you can see, the diffusion has made the subject a lot darker. This was before the diffuser, this is after the diffuser. So while we have nice light and very soft shadows on the side, the difference between the really light parts and the dark parts is phenomenal. You have to make sure there's no light leaks on the subject because you can cut out that stuff later. My laptop has certain blemishes like the scratcher right here and I do want it to be visible on the picture so people know what they're putting their money into but with this soft light you can't really see the scratches. So some pictures will have to be taken with a direct light just so you can see these blemishes. I even had to put my phone there just so you can see some of these detailed cracks. You see that crack? You see it? You couldn't see it if this phone was off, so. The annoying thing about screens is that you capture reflections and then we're gonna have to be removing, cutting all those out in post just to make it look decent. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. We have a couple pictures that we took of our laptop. Some of them are taken with the A7S with a super wide lens like this one. And some of them I use the 50 mil. It gives more compression and some of that bokeh, which isn't something you always want for product shoots, but you know, sometimes it makes things look cool like this, you know, it goes off into the blurry background. Yeah, swagalicious. Slap on a preset that you think looks good with these photos and then we're just gonna go ahead and export them into Photoshop. Now obviously the first thing we have to do is get rid of these corners. And my favorite tool for doing things like that is the patch tool. You literally just select this bit and it kind of does like a smart fill for you, uh, matching it in with the rest of the background and already it looks like we're on some kind of background studio now i do want to get rid of me now since we don't really have any area that would match the background here we're just going to do a content aware fill now i want to leave that laptop reflection and this is not really important to do precisely because we're going to be blurring it later on anyway i'm going to do shift f5 which is going to do a content aware fill and see what results it gives us okay really strange but it'll have to do we'll do the same thing here filled it in nicely we still have a couple spots to take care of right here shift f5 nice um for all these little spots left we can just do the healing now i'm just gonna take the rectangular lasso tool and select the contents of my screen this selection could be a bit better so um let's click q and go to the the quick mask take a hard small brush and just go over some of the edges 
that need to be a little bit wider. Like that. Because it's such a wide lens, the edges of the screen aren't completely square. They're slightly rounded outwards. So using a brush like this can make a better custom selection of the screen space. Back to Q. And now we go filter, select a blur that you like. Uh, I generally use box blur because light without heat, that's the Instagram handle of my friend. He recommended it for photos and looks really natural. But for this, I'm still gonna use Gaussian, 20 pixels is fine. Uh, and it just gives like a matte screen look uh, while still having a natural reflection as opposed to just filling it in with black. Um, take the spot healing brush tool, get rid of some of, some of these dust specks. Now that's a good hack to have when you're taking product pictures. Make sure to clean up all these little thingies before you take pictures, dust it off, wipe off any smudges because it's a lot easier that way than having to zoom in afterwards and, and take them like this. This picture is pretty decent on its own, but I don't like this little bend in, this, in the screen background that we had. So again, I'm gonna go, let me take the rectangular lasso, this part with where the wrinkles are with the rectangular lasso and take the patch tool again and drag it out to where the flat part is okay now we select this ugly part left and we have a more or less smooth background obviously we have to figure this part out and figure this part out and we're good to go with a nice looking studio shot we still have this little bit left in the screen but that's not hard to take care of. Do it like this, like this, and patch tool. There we go. Looking good. There you go, guys. Those are some results that I'm pretty happy with. It's nothing super over the top fancy, but maybe it's gonna give you a couple ideas to step up your photography or the presentation of certain things you do at a tiny little level. And now this side falls off. Really? As always, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this video, what you want to see in the future on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm gonna see you guys next week. And now I can stop worrying about these things falling off. Ta-da! Oh my God, I'm white. That was racist. Bye. <laughs>